church, uh, if you would, I'd like you to uh, stand with us this morning. It looks a little bit different. Chrissy and Thomas are both out, so we're all pitching in. Um, at, in preparing for this week, I just kind of um, was reading through the Bible a little bit and kept running Psalms. is very close and dear to me just because I like it, and I ran across this. I thought it was a good way to start worship, but Psalm 66 reads, Shout with joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. So I invite y'all to reach out this morning. Lift your voices for the Lord.
when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. been desperate I cried those loud prayers like Job on his knees saying Lord I need more than a little help and I've been surrounded felt fear on all sides like Daniel and the light I know when I fight, I don't fight by myself. When I needed rescue, Jesus, you came through. Oh, in my heart is season, your promise held true. And every time I give an in, Lord, you you're still my Savior now, Jesus, you came through when I needed rescue. It's just in your nature to step in and say, because, because of you, Jesus, Jesus, when I've been, been defeated, defeated, I know you'll pull me out of my when I needed rescue, oh, Jesus, you came through. Oh, in my heart is seething, your promise held true. And every time I've given in, Lord, you have proven again that you're still my sin. within disaster you are calm inside the storm I have seen you move and I believe you would do what you did before you are peace within disaster you are calm inside the storm I have seen Amen. Please be seated. Um, uh, just sorry, first time I've done this. Kind of lost train of thought. Uh, please pay your attention to the screens for this morning's announcements. Good morning, everybody. Hope you're doing well today. I've got a few announcements for you. First, let's talk about the Central School Supply Drive. We have blue bags out in the atrium for you today that way you can go fill these up at the stores with school supplies for all of the kids of central get their school year started off right make sure you bring those back by august 11th then it's july 
we've made it halfway through 2024 and that means we're halfway to Christmas right crazy as you may remember last year we had our winter wonderland we are doing that again this year and to make it bigger and better we are again asking if you have any spare Christmas lights please bring them to me donate them to the church if you're not using them and we're gonna deck that back area out with a bunch of Christmas lights make it look really beautiful for everyone to drive through at the winter wonderland and also just throughout the entire Christmas season so Christmas in July thank you in advance if you have any spare lights we would love to take those off your hands and then August is almost here which means our block party is coming up very soon. You again may remember this from last year. A lot of fun. We had some yard games, a foam party pit for the kids. We had food trucks here. It's just a big celebration and you are not going to want to miss it. This year we have invitations for you out in the atrium or in your bulletin. So check those out today. Hand them out to friends. We want to bring everybody in the community here for all the fun we're going to have kicking off the school year in August. And, last thing, last week, I told you that our new series is starting today. Some scheduling thing came up, we're gonna push that just a little bit, but in case you weren't here last week, here's the teaser. Have you heard what they're talking about at Woodbine? Great. Things get so divisive nowadays. Feels like a time bomb, really. Yeah, and I heard they're talking about too. Can you believe that? No way! The day they talk about from the stage is the day the doors close. They wouldn't think. If they really want to stir people up, they need to talk about I don't know. This all feels so weird for a church. It's just... I love that. Sam did a great job with that. Uh, I will tell you that uh, uh, changing the date for the Not Safe for Worship series, that was on me. I decided to do that last week before I talked to Sam about the, the announcements. So, uh, so he, he's, I'm the one who made the shift and the change. And uh, so that will be happening on the 28th is when we'll start that. Uh, but just wanted to... Uh, give you a little teaser there. If you want to find out what it's going to be about, you're going to have to show up. So um, we want to also, one other quick announcement before our prayer request. Uh, we have uh, been given some decals, and these decals are with the Woodbine Church logo, the leaf with a cross in the middle, and Woodbine Church up under it to go on your back window of your vehicle. They're free to you. They were given to us. They're great uh, little decals. If you would like one, uh, they're out in the atrium, and you can also get um, a card that tells you how to put it on your window. So feel free to grab one when you leave today, and you're welcome to those. Uh, we appreciate the, the ones who donated those for us, and uh, you're welcome to, like I said, get you one and put it on your window, and uh, uh, we appreciate you doing that. Um, you know, I'm sure many of you have been uh, hearing about Hurricane Barrel, and uh, there's a lot of um, destruction that's already done, and it's headed up into North Mexico or uh, southern Texas right now is the, the route. So we need to pray for the folks who are in the path of Barrel who have already been affected by that and who will be affected by that hurricane that's coming up. Uh, I also want to share with you, you know, this past week I was at a funeral of a uh, man who was 93 years old, as a relative of my daughter in love, and uh, as we were at that funeral, we were celebrating his life and, and what it meant for him to follow Jesus, and I, I realized that 93 years just, it seems like a long time, but it's really not. It's really not. It's, compared to eternity, it's not. And I know people go through a lot of stuff in their lives um, and a lot of pain, but the good news is Jesus is here for you always and so I'd like for us to focus on him being with us and guiding us during our prayer time so if you'd like to join me around the altar I'd love to have you let's pray together
precious Father and our loving God, we are so thankful that we have the opportunity to be here in this place today. We are thankful for your love and your mercy and your grace. We are thankful for the hope that you bring to us as we are seeking to follow you with our whole heart. We thank you that as we go through life and deal with so much, you are with us. And that's how we can deal with the stuff we deal with in life. That's where our greatest strength is in knowing that you walk with us. We're reminded every day we live in a fallen world. And because we live in such a fallen world, Father, bad things happen. Sin abounds all over the place. But the good news is grace abounds more. So, Father, we give you thanks that as we face the trials, the struggles, the issues of life, we are strengthened by knowing that it is the Holy Spirit that will help us get through it. We're strengthened by knowing that when we are at our weakest, you are at your strongest. We're encouraged by knowing that your love for us never fails. We see the brevity of life every day. No matter how many years someone is on this planet, that's a short time compared to eternity. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that we would prepare ourselves not just to live for you in this life, but we would prepare ourselves for an eternity with you by accepting you as our Savior and our Lord. I want to thank you. I want to thank you that you will save those who are lost and you will guide those who are saved. And you will be with us. You are the first and the greatest giver. And we are thankful for the blessings you give to us every day. We do pray for the folks who are in the path of the hurricane barrel. We pray, Heavenly Father, for your protection for them. Stuff can be replaced. But in the midst of the storm that they are facing and some have already faced, may they know that you are with them. For it's in your name we pray. If you are new with us, we are, want to welcome you. Thank you so much for being here. We invite you to do what we call Stick for Six. Hang out with us for six Sundays. You'll get a chance to know a little bit more about us, and we get a chance to uh, get to know you some. Um, we are so thankful that you are here. And for those of you who are here each week and have been here for a while, I'm thankful to see you too. Uh, it's always good to be able to come together to worship here with you on a Sunday morning. Um, we want to, uh, I want to invite you to imagine something. Imagine that we no longer had a children's ministry. What would that look like? Imagine that we no longer had a youth ministry. What would that look like? Imagine that we no longer had life groups. Imagine that we no longer helped central Imagine that we didn't do our brown bag event in the fall. Imagine what this community would be like had Woodbine not even been here. A lot of things would happen. But there are a lot of things that we do that might not. And the reason I want you to imagine that is you helped to make that possible. The children's ministry, the youth ministry... Our discipleship groups, our connect groups, our outreach to Central, our outreach in the fall with all that we do there, the things we do throughout the whole year, you make it possible. And the way you make that possible is through several ways. One is by volunteering. Another is by giving. Another is by praying. Another is by being here. And another is by witnessing. Without you doing those things, what we do in this community would not be possible. 
So I want to thank you. I want to thank you for giving of your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. And there are several ways you can give financially to the church. There are um, a a list of ways you can give in the bulletin. Uh, There's a QR code that you can uh, scan and you can give in that way. It's going to be up on the screen. Those of you joining us online, you can uh, send us your gifts and your prayer requests through the link below this feed. And the offering you brought with you today, you can place in the offering basket as you leave today. And it's through your giving that we're able to do what we do. And without that, we wouldn't be able to do it. So thank you so much for that. And also, if you have a prayer request, just fill out this little slip of paper. It's in the pews. uh, Excuse me, the pews. That tells you how long I've been preaching. Uh, It's in the seats in front of you. It's also in the bulletin. Fill that out. Drop it in the offering basket. Let us know what your prayer request is. And we want to pray for you. For our youth, at the end of this next song, we would like to invite you to meet Trey out in the atrium to go to your connect group. Let's continue in our service. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I
Father, we just thank you this morning for the opportunity to come and worship you, Lord. And, and the lyrics of that song just couldn't be any more true, Lord, that you're perfect in all of your ways. Lord, you're just so perfect in all your ways and so indescribable in everything that you do, Lord. We just, we just thank you. And, uh, Lord, we lift up Pastor Jimmy as he's preparing to give us the, give us the word today that he may just, everyone just may welcome the word into his heart and, and it may be moved by the Spirit, Lord, today. Thank you for the opportunity to come to church. We love you, God. Amen. I really appreciate Jeff and the whole team and how uh, they have stepped in with uh, Chrissy and Thomas both out. So we are so thankful for that. Good job, Jeff. We appreciate it, brother. You and the team. Uh, We are a nation that's in trouble. Now, contrary to popular belief, it has absolutely nothing to do with politics. It has nothing to do with who is in the White House, the governor's mansion, Senate, the House of Representatives. It has nothing nothing to do with all of that. The underlying issue for a nation, that, for our nation, is much deeper than something as trivial as politics. And I'm going to share with you a few areas that I see where we are in trouble. And this, this is just a few of those areas. I'm sure you've got your own list, but uh, I've been paying attention for a while to things that are going on. Uh, one, one of the things we have lost in our nation is the ability to have civil discourse we've lost the ability to disagree and not have to hate each other doing it i mean there's there's so many examples i mean if you you know you want to start an argument just say something about joe biden or donald trump you're going to start an argument real quick and and it doesn't matter it doesn't matter which side of the aisle you're on, as they say in, in D.C. I mean, there, you can look at the, the leaders in, in D.C. I know that I said it's not about politics, but this is a great example. They can't have a conversation without attacking each other. And we can't have a conversation in, in civil society anymore without having to, to hate the other person because they don't think like we do. Or be hated by the other person because we don't think like they do. We're, there's divisiveness that is running rampant in, in our nation. I mean, if everybody, I can, there are a lot of hot button topics out there. You know, we could talk about gun control and immigration and, and sanctuary cities and all of this kind of stuff that's out there. Everybody's got an opinion about it. And, and by golly, if you don't have my opinion, there's something wrong with you. That's how people feel today. We've lost the ability to simply disagree. I was watching several years ago, I was watching when Senator Cory Booker was, uh, during Mike Pompeo's confirmation hearing, he went after Pompeo's deeply held convictions based on his Christian belief. He was asking Pompeo if he was going to belittle, demean, and mock people while at the same time he was belittling, demeaning, and mocking Pompeo. Daily we hear about somebody being killed in some way. Police and first responders, hopefully it's getting a little bit better now, but it, it has been where police and first responders get attacked and killed just for doing their job and keeping people safe and taking care of them. Some scholars believe that the church will no longer be relevant by the year 2050. Do you realize that's just 26 years away? Do you also realize that those of you who have children that are 10 and under 
you're talking about the church of your grandchildren. It will no longer be relevant. That's what some scholars say. Do you know that the, the divorce rate and the permanent separation rate in America is at 50%? That means there's a divorce. Uh, I read somewhere there was a divorce every 42 seconds. And I look at that and think about that and say, well, surely it's better in the church. Well, no, it's not. The divorce rate is the same across church or non-church people. I was looking up some stats, and the latest stats on abortion that I found was from 2020. And on that stat, in that one year, 930,160 children were killed through abortion. You realize that's an abortion every 29 seconds? And the amount of time I have taken to tell you the statistic, almost two abortions have occurred. Human trafficking is growing worse and worse across the world. There is... Uh, 49.6 million adults and children who are trafficked worldwide with 12 million of those children, of those trafficked being children. And it's happening in, in our community. All of these are happening in our community. According to a 2022 stat, the latest I was able to find, the opioid epidemic is, is rampant. There were 107,941 drug overdose deaths in 2022. That's one death every two minutes. According to a 2023 stat, there were 653,104 homeless people in the U.S., with 70,000 plus of those homeless being our veterans who have faithfully served this country, with 111,620 of those homeless being children. You know that at Central, and I don't know what the stat is for this past year, but over previous years, 10% of the student body at Central High School or Central School is homeless. I don't know the stats for the rest because I hadn't talked to those principals. See, unfortunately, the list of problems and challenges we're facing in our country is almost unending. And we are not exempt from that because we live in this beautiful area. We're, we're not. We're, uh, you know, to, pace is... A microcosm of what's going on in the rest of the world. Things, everything I'm talking about there has happened here in our community, in the Pace and Milton and Pensacola and area. Th these counties that we live in, that we, we are here all the time, it's happening all around us. And so we are in a battle for our nation. And in this battle for our nation, our fight first begins here in our community. Because this is where we are. So the question is, how can we enter into this battle? What can we do? As I was trying to figure out uh, and see what, what I was supposed to preach on today, there's a scripture that came to me, and you'll be hearing a little bit more about that in a few minutes. But this scripture gives us what we can do as a people to fight for our nation. But before we go there, I want to go back to a king by the name of Solomon. King Solomon, he was the son of David. And he became the ruler of Israel to succeed his dad. And he is credited with being one of the wisest, if not the wisest man who ever lived. And Solomon built the temple in Jerusalem that was 
built according to the specifications that God had given. And it was built to be used as worship for God. And, and he prayed a prayer of dedication over that temple. And he asked God that, uh, to accept the temple as a place of worship. And then Solomon waited. Months, maybe even years, had, been, had passed since Solomon's prayer of dedication is recorded in chapter 6 of Second Chronicles. And several other building projects had been completed since uh, uh, the temple had been completed. And, and this scripture is a record of God's answer to Solomon's prayer that God would accept the temple that Solomon built as a place for God to be worshipped. And so we pick it up in 2 Chronicles chapter 7. And this is when the Lord answered Solomon's prayer. And listen to what he says. The Lord appeared to him at night and said, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people... Now, hold on for a second before we go any further. As we look at those kind of things, in other words, what God is saying, when all kinds of trials and troubles come, which they're going to come, when those kind of things come and everything seems hopeless, there is something the people can do to help. God is getting ready to tell them. God prescribes a process by which the nation can be healed and restored and I believe that that process that God was prescribing for Israel is the process that needs that is prescribed for us today in 2024 for our nation and for our community so the battle for pace and the battle for our nation it begins with Christ followers It begins with Christ followers. So listen, to, let's go to the next verse of that Second Chronicles. Notice what it says in Second Chronicles seven fourteen. It says, "If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land." See, I believe that this same prescription can be used for us today. I don't believe this was a prescription just for the people of Israel, even though God was speaking this to Solomon and to the people of Israel. I believe this is the same prescription we need for our healing. See, prayer for healing of a nation begins with God's people. Those who don't know God aren't going to pray for the healing of this nation. So, you know what a definition of a revival is? A revival, you got to have something in you to be revived. So revival is not just a series of meetings. A revival is what we pray for God to do in us, to revive in us the fire of the Holy Spirit in us. Revival starts with the believer, not with the unbeliever. Because the unbeliever is not going to call out to God for a revival because they've got nothing to revive. They've, they haven't started a relationship with him. Revival begins in the heart of every Christ follower. That's where revival begins. So the prayer for the healing of our nation is going to begin with the Christ follower. And prayer for the healing of pace and, the heal and God's blessings to flow on pace and Milton and our communities that are around us. That begins with us. The healing of our community and our nation is not going to begin with those who don't believe. It's going to begin with us. And by us, I mean all Christ's followers. If you look at verse 14, 
in verse 14, there is a promise, the healing of the land. But that promise comes with four conditions. So what I want us to do is I want us to look at the promise, at the conditions before we look at the promise. So here's the first condition. The first condition is we must humble ourselves. We must humble ourselves. Abraham Lincoln, in October of 1863, said this, We have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. We have grown in numbers, wealth, and power as no other nation has ever grown. But we have forgotten God. It's 160 years ago. We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us. And we have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. Intoxicated by unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace. Too proud to pray to the God that made us. Even though that was written 160 years ago, that describes us today. That describes our nation today. we're We're not a nation of humility. Andrew Murray says this, The truth is this, Pride must die in you, or nothing of heaven can live in you. Pride must die in you or nothing of heaven can live in you. See, when we are proud, we, we are declaring to God that we don't need him. When we're not humble, we're, te- we're, we're declaring to him that, that we have no need of his direction. We have no need of his guidance. We have no need of anything from him because we can handle this ourselves. We can think for ourselves, we can do for ourselves, we can provide for ourselves, we can get our own direction in our own life. We don't need him whenever we're not humble. And we're constantly telling God that he don't know what he's talking about. We we do it all the time because his Bible says don't do something. We say, well, he didn't mean it for us. He meant that for somebody else. So we do it. We tell God that he doesn't know what he is doing in so many places. I'm going to give you one hot button example. All right? This this is so controversial. And I can say one word and people are will tense up. Here it is. Gender. California recognizes three genders, male, female, and non-binary. And it's the first state to introduce a gender-neutral birth certificate. Did you know that New York City officially recognizes 31 genders? 31. Did you know that Tinder, the dating site Tinder, it officially recognizes 50 plus genders? Did you know that in the United States, Facebook recognizes 58 genders? And if that's not enough, if you'll go to the England and sign up, they recognize 71 genders. Now, I know this is a hot button topic. But it's not hot button for God. He's already settled this. Okay? He, he took care of it. And, and, and there are only two genders. There's only male and female. I don't, I don't care what anybody else says. But we, we want to tell God he has no idea what he's talking about. The definition of gender is the state of being male or female. That's the definition. 
And you, you could even take God out of the discussion. You could take him completely out and the fact would not change. Biologically, there are only two genders. And I want, us to, I want us to keep God in the equation, though, and I want us to see what he says about it. Apparently, he knew that this would be an issue now because he said something about it at the creation of the world. In Genesis 1, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. That's it. And now you can get in all kinds of trouble if you mispronounce somebody. I also want to tell you, you don't have to enter into that. You don't have to take part in that. But see, this is a way, a place where God is saying, you know, he, he said something, he's declared something, and we're saying he don't know what he's talking about. And a lot of folks will say, well, Jimmy, you're just being mean. No, I'm just telling you the truth. If you think it's mean, that's on you. Okay, I, I didn't write it. I can just declare it. And this is the truth. I don't think we ought to be hateful to anybody. I don't think we ought to be cruel to anybody. But I also don't think that we ought to not stand on the truth. You cannot teach someone who knows everything, anything. And when our culture is telling God that he does not know what he created and that he made a mistake, then we have a huge problem. And we cannot begin to hear from God if we're not willing to recognize that he knows better than we do and that he has what is best in store for us. Listen, we need to humble ourselves. We need to realize we're not so high and mighty. And we don't know it all. But we can trust the one who does. Humility is not an American trait. I wish it were. So we need to humble ourselves. If And it's, it's interesting that that's the beginning of the four conditions. Because if you don't do that, you can't do the other three. So you humble ourselves. And the, sec the second condition is this. You pray. You pray. Prayer comes after we humble ourselves and not before. Prayer acknowledges that we need God and that we are dependent on Him. Prayer is the, the listen, the, the, prayer is the prerequisite for the next condition that we're going to talk about. But, but you know what? We need to realize that we need to trust something outside of ourselves. We need, to be, we need to be focused in on God and not on us. If we focus in on God, we will be taken care of. And one way to do that is spend time in prayer. Spend time talking to God. Spend time praying not only for yourself, for your family, for the church, for the community. Spend time praying for revival in this land, that God would bring that revival and he would sweep it through this nation. You see, you cannot seek God's face if you're not communicating with him. And that's the third condition. The third condition is to seek God's face. So we need to humble ourselves. We need to pray. And we need to seek God's face. And seeking God's face is simply seeking his will. Well, Pastor Jimmy, I'm not sure... Of what God's will is for my life. Well my first question would be is. Are you reading your Bible? You cannot say God is not speaking to you. If you're not reading his word. If your Bible is closed. You can't blame God for not hearing from him. Now 
And to seek God's face is simply seeking out His will. And if you want to know what His will is, listen. If what you are doing is contrary to the, what the Word says, that's not His will. If what you're doing is in line with what the Word says, that's in His will. And He has different things that He calls on different people to do. He's called me to be a pastor. He hadn't called everybody to be a pastor. But He's got a will and a purpose for your life if you will simply seek Him. If you will seek His face. Look in His Word. Spend time talking to Him. Praying to Him. Seek His face. And when we seek His face, we are declaring that we're going to trust Him even when we don't understand Him. So we trust Him even when we don't understand Him. That's why we walk by faith, not by sight. Because we don't know our future. We just know the God who knows our future. So we need to humble ourselves. We need to pray. We need to seek God's face. And here's the last condition. We need to turn from our wicked ways. Wicked ways, that's sin. That is sin. Sin blocks our communication from God. And if we are not willing to turn from our sins to God, then we are not humble. We don't believe that God's way is the right way when we don't want to turn away from our sins. And by not turning to God, we are telling God that we would rather direct our own lives and that we want Him to just butt out. That's what we're telling him. We might not use those words, but if we're ignoring him, that's the same thing. Listen again to President Lincoln from October of 1863. It is the duty of nations as well as of men to own their dependence upon the overruling power of God. To confess their sins and transgressions in humble sorrow. Yet with assured hope that genuine repentance will lead to mercy and pardon. And to re recognize the sublime truth announced in the Holy Scriptures and proven by all history. Those, that, that those nations are blessed whose God is the Lord. Humble ourselves. Pray. Seek God's face. Turn from our wicked ways. And we do those. Notice what God says. He said this promise. God will forgive our sins and heal our land. Solomon he was a, a man filled with wisdom. He was blessed with riches and position. And he, he had good intentions. He built this beautiful temple that, that by carefully following God's instructions about how the temple was to be built. He offered the sacrifices he was supposed to offer in the manner in which he was supposed to offer them. But in his private life, Solomon did not follow God's will. He had been told by God not to marry foreign women, and he did. A bunch of them. He had a, a thousand wives and near misses. I mean, you know, that's, that's a lot of wives and concubines there. I mean, that's a lot. A thousand. I mean, his private life was in shambles. See, because of these foreign women that he married that he was not supposed to marry, they introduced Solomon to these false gods and these false idols. And these false gods and these false idols were then introduced to the people of Israel by the women that had influenced Solomon. 
And they began to contaminate the people of Israel with their beliefs and with their practices. And Solomon's pagan wives caused his downfall and eventually the downfall of Israel. But the the blame rests on Solomon because Solomon was disobedient. And even though Solomon carefully followed God's instructions in building the temple and offering sacrifices, he paid no attention to what God said about areas of his personal life. And no matter how good or spiritual we are in most areas of our lives, one unsurrendered area can begin our downfall. You see, we need to learn from Solomon's mistakes and guard carefully every area of our lives. Don't give sin a foothold in your life. There may be some apps on your phone you need to delete. There may be some things you need to get off of social media. There may be some stuff you need to cancel, you know, that, that, that's going on in your life. There, you, don't give Satan a foothold in your life. And when we allow any desire to rival God's proper place in our lives, we have taken the first step toward moral and spiritual decay. And God will not forgive our sins until we repent. We have to repent. We have to be sorry for our sins. We have to desire to change the direction that our life is going, to turn away from our sins. True repentance is more than talk. It is changed behavior. Edmund Burke says this, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Is that what's going on in America? Are we putting too much hope in a political party instead of the creator of the universe? Are we more interested in being right than we are in being made right? Are are we good people doing nothing? Are Christ followers not praying? Are we not seeking God's face? Are we not turning to Him? Have we given up our community? Have have we given up our nation? Have we surrendered our families and our community and our nation to sin and to Satan? Do we think it is too late? Do we we think that, that there's no use? Listen, God will not heal our land until we recognize that He is the only one who can. And until we turn to Him and trust in Him. And if God is going to come and be with His people, He's not going to come until His people ask Him. Our nation truly needs healing. It doesn't need healing because we're the United States. It needs healing. Because God's got a purpose for our nation. And it's founding all the way up to today. God's still got a purpose, but our problem is we've turned away. You don't get healed by seeking healing. You get healed by seeking God. Our community and our nation will only be healed when we seek God again. And until we humble ourselves and pray and seek God's face and ask Him to come, healing will not become a reality. And I want to help us. I want us to change our focus. Yes, our nation needs this. I fully believe that. But guess what? We start with where we are. I'm not going to start in D.C. because I don't live there. This is where I live. And God can, can begin a work here in this church and in this community. 
If, if the people of God will humble ourselves and pray and seek God's face and turn from our wicked ways, turn from our sin and begin to follow him, he will bring healing to this nation. And it can start right here. It can start right now. It can start in your house. It can start in your home. It can start in your heart. So don't think about this as being some big thing we got to do for the whole nation. We start now. We start here. We start with us. And I firmly believe that the foundation for every great move of God is prayer. I heard a story this past week about a group of students who had gone uh, and they went to John Wesley's house and they were touring his house and uh, you know that and John Wesley is the founder of Methodism and and um, you know he brought revival God used him to bring revival to England and to spread the gospel in in America and and uh, they they were showing them John Wesley's bedroom and they were looking at the the bedroom, and you go around to the one side of the bed, and you're going to see two round holes in the carpet or the rug that's on there. And the guy leading the tour, the the tour said, "That's where John Wesley knelt and prayed so hard for revival in England." He, pray, he, he was on his knees so much that there are still two impressions there where you can see where he prayed. And he prayed for hours for revival. And revival came to England and, and a, a civil war that was going to be bloodier than the one that happened in France. That civil war was stopped because revival came to England. Every time revival has come, it's been preceded by prayer. Every time healing has come, it's been preceded by prayer. So where is the hope? Our only hope is in God. When God's people begin to seek God's face and trust Him and believe that He is able to do what He said that He would do, then we can know that God will heal our land. And what I would like to invite us to do, I would like to invite us to go forward by going back. I want to invite us to go back to trusting God. To go back to praying. To go back to the principles He has given to us. Go back to believing that God is able to do far more than we can begin to dream or imagine. To go back to fully depending on Him. I also want to invite us through prayer to proclaim. Uh, excuse me. To, through prayer to reclaim the surrendered ground we've given up to the enemy. We will no longer back down, give in, or give up. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek God's face, seek His face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Let us pray that God will be the God of our city. Let us pray circles around pace. Let's pray circles around our homes and our neighborhoods. Let's pray and get ready for God to do a work. My question that I have for you is, will you join me today in prayer for our nation? Will you join me today to pray that God will be the God of our city? Let's pray. Our precious Father and our loving God, we are so thankful for the saving grace of Jesus Christ. We are so thankful for the hope that we find that is fully in you. We are so thankful, Father, that when everything seems bleak, 
when all seems lost, the good news is that you are still on the throne. And if we will just do what your word says, if we will humble ourselves, if we will pray, if we will seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, you will hear from heaven. You will heal our land. So, Father, we pray for that. I pray for revival to sweep through this nation. But, Lord, I also know that revival has to begin somewhere. And that place is in the heart of every believer. And I pray for revival to begin in each of our hearts right now. I pray that that fire would kindle, be rekindled in us. I pray, Heavenly Father, that we would lean more on you. We would trust more in you. We would know that you are with us no matter what. I pray for revival. Father, I pray for those who are listening right now who don't know you as Savior and Lord. If that's who you are and you want to come to know Christ as your Savior and your Lord, I want to invite you to give your heart to Him right now. Let Him heal you from your sin and forgive you and give you hope and a future. You can begin a relationship with Jesus by praying this very simple prayer. Will you pray this prayer? You can remember it with these four words. The first one is sorry. God, I'm sorry for what I've done wrong. I'm sorry for the sin in my life. I'm sorry I've rejected you up to this point in my life. Next word is please. Please come into my life and save me and please become the Lord of my life. Please forgive me for my sins. And the last two words are thank you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for never giving up on me. Thank you for giving me hope and a future. Father, for those who have prayed that prayer for the first time today in minute, be with them as they get to know you better and love you more. Continue to reveal yourself to them and to all those who believe in you. May we all pray for revival. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Today is Communion Sunday. I want to remind you that you do not have to be a member of this church to receive communion. The Lord Jesus Christ is our host and we are his guests and he invites whosoever to come. I'm reminded that on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he gave thanks to his father, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat this is my blood, which is uh, my body, which is broken for you. As often as you receive this, remember me. Also on that same night, he took the cup. He gave thanks to his father and he blessed it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and drink. This is my blood, which is shed for you. As often as you receive this, remember me. Will you pray with me? Our precious Father and our loving God, we are thankful for the saving grace of Jesus Christ. We are thankful that as we come to this holy table and prepare to receive these sacraments, that we would remember that while we are here, we are not here to mourn a dead man. We are here to celebrate a risen Lord. So I pray, Heavenly Father, that as we prepare our hearts to receive this communion, may we remember to give thanks. I pray, Heavenly Father, that as we consecrate these elements here in your name, I pray, God, that you would, you would continue to reveal yourself to us in our lives in every way. And may we be thankful for this time of communion. And may we be thankful always for your great love for us. Now, as we receive this bread and this cup, may it bring nourishment to our body. May we nourish your kingdom with our service.
for us. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. I'd like to invite those who are going to assist me at this time to please come to your stations. I want to share with everyone, we have four stations that are uh, available. Uh, these four stations, there's one at the end, uh, over here at, at each one of these doors. There are two here in this center section. Uh, we want to share with you that you'll receive the, the one with the bread. They will take a piece of bread and place it in your hand. And uh, you'll then dip it into the cup. And receive communion in that way. I also want to share with you. If you need gluten free communion elements. If you will come to my station. And if you'll just let us know you need gluten free elements. We have those here uh, available. I also would like to share with you. If you would like to get a communion kit. It has the juice and it has the cup, uh, the, the wafer here in the cup, and it is also gluten-free. You can come to mine or Brenda's station and receive uh, the little uh, communion cup if you would like to do communion in that way. Those of you who are seated on the outside aisles, if you'll just w walk towards the wall uh, and come down that aisle that, that way and receive communion there. Those of you in the center section, if you'll just slide all the way over to the far aisle over here, if you'll come down to either station that's open, whichever one is open, and receive communion. If you'd like to spend some time, any one of you, at the altar for a time of prayer, you're welcome to do that. It is open for you to spend time in prayer. Then you can return to your seat. Well, the table has been set. The invitation has been offered. Won't you come?
just to bring communion to your seat. If you could help us out, raise your hand. And if you see a hand pointed out to us, that would be great. Uh, so we have someone headed over here. Anybody else? Anybody else? Well, as you're able, let's continue to stand and let's continue to worship. Praise forever to the King of Kings. What a beautiful song. What a great song for communion, too. Um, if you are new with us, I would love the opportunity to visit with you. I'll be out by the couch, exit these doors, hang a lift, come over there and see me. I would love to get a chance to get to know you and get to visit with you for a little bit. If anybody needs help with anything, if you're going through some things in your life, you got questions, you're struggling with some stuff, let us know because we want to help you out. Uh, just talk to us. We definitely want to help you out uh, and let us know in any way. Uh, that we can help. At this time, I want to ask uh, Pastor Brenda to come up. She's going to close us out with prayer. Brenda. Thank you, Pastor. We do have um, the car decals, do we not, at the information desk. If you want to pick one up for your car, it says Woodbine Church. We'd love for you to have one. Um, also, I want to mention, if you'd like to get connected, come see us, and we'll help you out. Let us pray. Lord. Here we are, we know we don't know as much as you because you created us. So we just humbly bow before you and ask you what you'd have us to do. What are we gonna do today, Lord? Because we are your people and we love you very much. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.